Those of you who know the channel will be aware that it's a bit weird to see us in the same place at the same time. We're at Rupert's home, deep in the south of France, and because we can, and because we think you might quite enjoy it, we've decided to go on a standing stones hunt. Or, as we're in France, in Chasse de Ménéon. Un chasse de menhir. Oui. Parce qu'on aime bien chercher les menhirs. Yes. Well, we do, don't we? We do. We do like to go and hunt out a standing stone. And there's lots around here. It's a long time since so we've done it. It is. Rather yeah. too long. Uh, so, yeah, we should go and do that thing. We should, yeah. So, the purpose of this journey is, um, uh, in all honesty, is uh, practicing. Yeah. Um, uh, practicing for uh, Gebekli Tepe to Stonehenge. Um, What's so, that we hear you cry? Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, more of that and on. In the moment, we're negotiating the early stages of our journey to find a standing stone in the countryside of. Describe your countryside around you. Oh, well, it's um, it's the Ode Valley. Yeah. And uh, it's a near, near a place called Peyrol, which is in between Serre and Arc, if you want to find it on a map. The River South that we're running alongside now, there's a patch uh, just the other side of my village. One of the reasons that the Romans were coming down here a lot is because uh, there's a place where there is salt water. You get the, yeah. the, they came here for the salt and the ores, gold and silver mines down here. Obviously, they're all exhausted now, but um, but the Romans were very, very busy down here. Another interesting fact as well is you go over to Alet Les Bains, which is a village uh, just a few miles away. There's a casino there. I mean, why is there a casino in a tiny little village? And the reason is that they still have a thing where, because uh, the Romans used to gamble down here. Um, and, uh, and so they still have a thing that if the Romans had a casino, then you're still allowed to have a casino. <laughs> it's all a little bit strange, uh, really. Amazing. Um, yeah, probably even more interesting is at the top of that hill up there. Yes is um, Blanchefort. Blanchefort um, Templar stronghold date approximately. I'd say, I'd say more outpost than stronghold. Templar outpost, yeah. yes. A date on it, oh, I don't know, 13... When were the Templars doing this? Way too late for me. Yeah, anyway. There it is. We're, we're just approaching uh, the village of Serre, where um, we lived for a little while before we were waiting, while we were waiting for our house to go through. But the chateau up there, uh, on, the, uh, on the slope there, that chateau, we, uh, we lived in uh, the, at the house just below it, uh, you can see to the right. But that chateau was owned by a French actor called Jean Duchamp, who was, uh, oh no, Deschamps, it was Jean Deschamps, um, who was the French equivalent of Laurence Olivier, really. He was hugely respected. And we got to know him a little bit, long, a bit before he died. And uh, he showed me all the photographs of uh, when they bought the chateau. It was just an empty shell, because what had happened after the French Revolution when they'd killed all the aristocrats and um, the farmers having dispatched all the aristocrats what they, what they did was they just moved their animals in so the, the chateau over time was just gutted in a place where sheep and cows would, uh, would shelter from the weather and uh, the photographs he showed us of just how, I don't know, I can't imagine how much money he spent but putting a new roof on a castle, for God's sake, um, and just re rebuilding. You know, obviously, there's certain things like the spiral staircases and all that was still fine, but the actual guts of the building, they're no, completely rebuilt. Unbelievable. Uh, okay, so that's where the Poussin tomb was. 
I'm just going to pull over here and see if we can get shouted at by a farmer and let this car go. Um, uh, and there's a walking party coming down to see it here. <laughs> Look. <laughs> um, no, it's a funny thing. If any of you know any of the story around uh, Renle Chateau and um, Poussin, Poussin did a painting, the French artist Poussin, he did a painting called uh, uh, Les Bergers d'Arcadie. Um, and it was painted right there. And the art historian said that, well, it can't have been because Poussin never came down here, when clearly Poussin had painted a scene from there. You could match up the landscape behind it. Um, anyway, the thing was, it was relevant to the story, but the, there's a farmer who owns that land. And he hated the fact that people were coming down to see it. And so he would, uh, he would shout at people and threaten them and get them to uh, disappear, oblivious to the fact, um, was it? Yeah. Oblivious to the fact that um, if he'd just charged people a euro each uh, to visit it, he would have made a fortune. Uh, just, we've just missed the turning. I don't we think we I have. No, we haven't. Shut up. <laughs> Yeah, I should just concentrate on uh, <laughs> pointing the camera at uh, Rupert at this time. You know, I shouldn't engage at all with what's going on around uh, outside, whether we've missed turnings or not. I still think we have, actually, but never mind. We'll sort ourselves out. You distinctly said the words came out of your mouth earlier on. Yeah. It's past the bend of... Uh... Yeah, so I take that back um, because I have actually gone past it. Um, and uh, now I need to drive up the road to turn around and get back again. <laughs> Too much talking, not concentrating. Me, I'm saying nothing. <laughs> Makes a bloody change. Have you found it? Well, it's, it's right here. You're absolutely right. Right, okay. That's it. Impressive. What's that? Well, slinging, you, slinging your backpack on now, you know, it's uh, <laughs> something we don't see every day. So, I suppose finding, I mean, we haven't found it yet. No, we haven't. But finding a, a little, um, I don't know how big it is even. Well, it's, called, it's called the Grand Menhir, so it should oh. be, uh, it should be a, a, at least appreciable. Yeah. Um, uh, no, there is so much prehistory down here there's so much to be found but hardly any excavations and real archaeological work happen here not too far away you know there's teams in Perpignan and that stuff but actual excavations going on in this region nothing really yeah. um, and so it's fascinating when you find so where we <laughs> the stone we're looking for now um, but clearly the, the settlements would have been substantial. There are some bigger, later settlements, you know, Roman and later. And you know that if you've got Roman settlements that are appreciable in size, then there's going to have been people there beforehand. And it's, you know, trying to get a sense, really, of you know, what, what's the topography like when we find a stone? Uh, what can we see from there? Does it look as if the landscape would have been, you know, this is a place to be looking or... Is it a good vantage point? I mean, the views down the valley from up here are beautiful. Maybe that was a thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't know. If it, for me, I don't know, because it's all conjecture, isn't it? Totally. You know, um, so I don't know. The point is, although we love hunting for odd things in the landscape, where the, where, where the, uh, where the heck does it get us? <laughs> Well, yeah, there is always that. Yeah, yeah. All kind of begs the question about um, knowing we're coming to a place in the landscape where we can't be definitive about what goes on. And, you know, we all know that uh, despite you know, multitudinous excavations here, there, nobody's going to excavate a, properly no. a single stone. No. Uh, so... They must, and that's the attraction, in that they uh, forever remain enigmatic. 
Um, there's actually not far from here. I mean, as the crow flies about 15 miles that way, east, um, there's uh, quite a big Neolithic settlement that it's been catalogued and you can go there and there's dolmens that, you know, they've got numbers on them, <laughs> so they know what's there, but it's not been excavated at all. It's just recorded. Uh, but if, I mean, I can't remember how many dolmens there are. I mean, most of them, you can see the capstone on the ground. They haven't dug them out. Um, but uh, there's probably half a dozen dolmens over there. Now, if you've got half a dozen dolmens around one settlement, there must have been a lot of people living there. Yeah. Uh, so if yeah. that's, you know, not far from where we are now, it was a busy part of the world. Not far now. I mean, this is an easy one, isn't it, to be honest? This is an easy one. I just <laughs> need a new leg. Yeah. Now what have you found? A nest of Campanotus vagus. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the larger ants that we have down here. Yeah. OK. And Maybe that's the value in uh, coming out in the wild and looking for standing stones. You further find other interesting... Yeah. Interesting things. We do. Oh my god. Look what, look what we found. Look. What? What is it? <laughs> well, well, that was easy. <laughs> that was one of the shortest walks to a standing stone we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that the fence electrified? Uh, there's only one way to find out. No, it can't be. There's a cyclosaconica. <laughs> so close to Conica, yes. One of the very few spiders, it's tiny, one of the Where? very few there. Oh there. One of the very few spiders that um, makes a stable mentum through its uh, web. What? Makes a stable what? Stable mentum. It's a, it's a, a strip of silk down the middle of the web where it stores its right. food. Spiders <laughs> and standing stones. Wow. Well, look at that. There we go. I have to say, well, it's a river conglomerate, so they've dragged it up from down there. OK. How can you tell it's a conglomerate then? Well, you look at, um, look at the edge there, and it's like a whole load of pebbles have just been Boshed into a load of cement is what it looks like. Yeah, and that's just over Geological time, I mean, I don't know how many Millions of years that would be But that that would have been riverbed all those pebbles just sinking into the mud and over time the mud Hardens into rock yeah. I'm trying to remember because my memory is as you know rubbish but um, I think Typically, a lot of orange lichens prefer basaltic rocks, and so it's possible that within that conglomerate that there's rocks that have been washed down the river from Lord knows where, from somewhere volcanic originally. Who knows? That's exciting. For you, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Every but... pebble's got a story to tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... Um... Not, not everybody, uh, you know, is watching this video for a botany and uh, geology lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the stones! There's a bee orchid just up there. <laughs> Tell us about the stones, Rupert! <laughs> I don't know nothing. <laughs> what what Actually, sort of a channel is this? I, <laughs> I wish people wouldn't do this, though. Don't you? Just... Oh, there is graffiti, isn't Carving there? Carving graffiti, sort of yeah. A heart, a mystic and I know symbol. It's, it's uh, all very romantic and everything, but it's still vandalism. OK. Yeah, you can debate in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, just think, what is it that people feel they have to make their presence permanently marked? <clears throat> he said, pointing to the stand in stone. <laughs> 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 here we are. We've found our standing stone. It's right here. And actually, to be fair to it, it's um, 
it's in one of the most uh, yeah, nicest locations. It's beautiful, probably, isn't it? Yeah. And you, you can't see it from here. In fact, I said it on one of the others. But uh, from slight, just a little bit further up the hill, the view down into the mountains is fantastic. Yeah. And what do you what do you reckon? I mean, some of the reading I've been doing recently mm. uh, is actually speaking to that um, they may be actually representations of of people. You know how ancestors become gods. Yeah. In so many mythologies. Yes. And all I, the rest of it. Um, it's another one of those things that it's completely unknowable, though, isn't it? Well, absolutely. Except we can refer to the way. Uh, human beings tend to behave, you know, uh, the, the observable way in within history yes. that people have, have behaved and, you know, worshipped uh, statues, monuments and so on and so forth. It seems up to a certain point, though, that there was a, a taboo about modelling stone or chipping into it or uh, shaping it in any way uh, to represent the human form or, or do stylistic uh, uh, things with it. Uh. Well, it's an idea, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'd go along with it. But One thing we haven't said, you know, what sort of age are we talking about? Again. Yeah. <laughs> Unknowable, isn't it? I think the Unless guidebooks... we can extract it from the ground and see if there's anything <laughs> underneath that's datable. Yeah. But not going to no. do that. I wonder if somebody's... No, I couldn't have been doing that. Um, but, uh, yeah, our guidebooks always say anything from the Neolithic to the, to the Bronze Age. Yes. That's all you can say. Really? Yeah. Or Orcus pyramidalis coming up there. Nice. What you might have to do, go around with the camera <laughs> photographing all the flowers. <laughs> I mean, like, but uh, again, a question what sort of a channel this is. <laughs> anyway, I think our, 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 <laughs> our duty here is done. See, the absolute truth of the matter is that we've um, come out here as a, a bit of a practice. Yes. As I think we half mentioned earlier. Um, practice for when we're making a Beckley Tepe to Stonehenge and that um, demands a little bit of exclamation if, if you've not heard that from us before. Yeah, are you going to leap in there and explain? What, the Beckley Tepe to Stonehenge? Yeah. Well, okay, so we're, for those of you that uh, haven't heard about it before... Sorry, I just killed an insect. I know it's against your Don't religion. Don't do that. Well, it flew into my mouth. Well, at least eat it then. Don't spit it out. It's just a waste. Well, it could have been anything. Um, died for nothing. <laughs> Uh, no, Gebekli Tepe to Stonehenge. We're starting, it's probably going to be a three-part series. We originally thought five, but uh, we, we're hoping three now. Uh, literally tracing the history of the, the first farmers is kind of where we're at, going yeah. from Gebekli Tepe in Anatolia and heading west, uh, just through into the Mediterranean, the Aegean, up, in, uh, up into the Danube, looking at the different cultures along the way mm. that ultimately became the megalith builders mm. In, mm. Uh, in Western Europe and Britain and Ireland. An ambitious project. It is an ambitious, an ambitious project. project. But we're yes. doing it because we're, yes. we're crazy enough. Yes. Um, and the thing is that all our films before now, other than when we're doing stuff on the YouTube channel, uh, that our main films have just been Mike filming me, um, you know, telling something very specific. This is, uh, it's a completely different style of thing. So it's more the sort of thing that we've been putting on the channel more recently. I uh, mean, what you're trying to say is we're, we're going to be doing it vloggy style and we've never yes. done it vloggy style We've before. never done it vloggy style. So, uh, you know, forgive us if you're watching this and you think, fail. Well, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cut to the chase. The so, point uh, is, we're yeah. funded mostly for Gebekli Tepe to Stonehenge. We've been raising funds on Buy Me A Coffee. Please do go through to the link below uh, if you want to find out more. Mm. You know, there's a nice video telling you more about it. And uh, <laughs> although we're fully funded, uh, the funding will roll over. Uh, we're, only fun we're only funded for the first yes, part that, that, yeah, yeah, uh, that's out the of thing. Mesopotamia, the, the turkey leg. So yeah. we will be uh, you know, keeping going with the, with the yeah. funding. We didn't give uh, a name so to our stone. To this stone? It yeah. It is the Grand Menhir de Peyrol. Uh, and Peyrol is, um, is a little tiny village. It's more like a hamlet, really, that's just that way. Um, job done. Yeah, job that's done. That's enough from us. See bye you bye. soon. Bye.